All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, last episode was all about my new sim from Advanced Racing Sims out of Canada. They flew in, they set this thing up. We got to unveil it, but uh, yeah, we dropped a thumbnail that said $45,000 retail and man, it set the comments on fire. I just wanted to address some of those comments and get back with you guys, see if you think there is a better turnkey solution out there. So yeah, let's get into it. I have a new sponsor this year. Their name is uh, Gem. They have a country club that's out of Arizona. They're gonna have a top golf style facility where they'd like to have racing sims they're gonna be sponsoring me so a big part of that is they want to have race fans I think this is a great way for the fans to get to drive with me and do remote uh, events plus once we're there we can use it for all different styles of events but the big hurdle is all of us sim users know is if you don't know how to use the equipment it's most likely gonna sit in the corner of the room and collect dust and I didn't want that to happen for my sponsors we needed to find a solution or a product and service that could keep the product running at all times and train the staff how to use it. I'm one man. I've definitely struggled with this in the past when I've had clients ask me to build a sim. There's no way for me to really service it or maintain it, especially when I'm on the road coaching or racing. Looked into advanced race sims, found their uh, turnkey solution that's behind me. And when the invoice originally came over, I was just like every other sim builder here. I saw a thousand for pre-assembly and then 7,000. And I was like, wow, that's uh, a hefty fee, right? So what do you get for that? Let's break that down. So I'll show the full invoice. I paid $34,507.71 for majority of the hardware that you see behind me. Now this did not include the active pedal, the throttle pedal, the base plate, the Simi Cube 2 Pro, my Cube Control wheel, and then also I plan to have the yaw plate that you might have seen on their Instagram. If you haven't, go check it out. That goes under the D-Box and that gives a yaw sensation. So that's the last piece. So when we added all of that up, that's how we got to that $45,000 mark. Put the invoices up right now. So you got the $34,507. Here is the invoice for the wheelbase. And then here is the invoice for the pedals. So yeah, that adds up to just about 40,000, but that is still missing the yaw plate, the camera, the mic, the light, it's steam deck, clutch pedal, and a few little pieces. That's where it gets you to that 45 mark. Now we can see the 8,000 there in just upfront service fees, and I'm not sure what their margins are on the parts, but yeah, that's how this sim got to $45,000 behind me. I do think the fit and finish and the service of them dropping off was top notch and definitely worth it in terms of if you have no technical ability to source this, build this, maintain it, and you're someone that does compete in competition, you have a tight turnaround, you're not gonna be waiting for sales to get parts. In terms of return to someone in that scenario or a commercial scenario, I think this is a huge win. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, I think you can build a sim for much less and I would probably go a do-it-yourself route even with advanced sim, uh, racing sims. I think their product is amazing and their service has been impeccable. I just, I love working with the guys. They're awesome over there and then they even race with you. It's, you just feel part of the family. So yeah, that's how this sim got to $45,000. If you guys think there is a better turnkey solution, I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'd love to race with you guys. Add me. I've been iRacing since 2010, all the way back to the, the you know, MX5 Cup, TDI, Solstice, the, the good old days. So yeah, here's my profile. I'd love to see you guys on there. I'd love to hear what you guys think. So yeah. All right, guys. So now that we've addressed the cost, let's go through some of my favorite features on the sim and things that I think are a must for any sim user. Absolutely, the active pedals are my favorite thing on the sim rig so far. Had a DD wheel before, so I think that's why that wasn't quite as impressive to me. Now I did just move into the Simi Cube 2 Pro and it is an upgrade from a Fanatec DD wheel and my opinion. I really love all of the Simi Cube products. I don't think you can go wrong with either of those. I have the throttle pedal. The clutch pedal that I'm going to be pairing them with is the Heusenfeld, so I don't have that yet, but I do have their uh, Heusenfeld e-brake on here. I think that's a really cool product as well. I like that a lot better than the Fanatec solution that I had before. I did just get a new shifter. Don't know too much about that. Haven't played with it enough to kind of give any feedback on that. The screen layout, I'm really digging, and the Sim, uh, I'm new to Sim Hub. Honestly, I'd never used that even though I've been on the sim for so long. Really digging sim hub, especially having, you know, on testing, I run some of the more telemetry stuff on top during the race, a lot more uh, timing and scoring. The uh, lighting on the sim is absolutely killer. I love coming in here and seeing that ambient light in here. I think that really adds a special touch. I don't like
like it overkill to make it feel super gamey and arcadey in here, but I do just like that little bit of blue or orange light to kind of just change the atmosphere a little bit in here. So yeah, I think that's a really cool touch as well. The sound on this thing is amazing. It shakes my floor and it just, it, it's a killer sound system. The headphones have been great. Everything on this sim has been great. I don't have any complaints so far besides the uh, dirt that falls off my feet while I'm shaking in the D-Box, right? I don't think the D-Box is for everybody is what I mean to say there. Uh, I do really enjoy it. I think the immersion's amazing. I do believe that the visual training that a sim brings you is probably still the most valuable part of that. My tips would be, you know, try to keep your wheel settings in the realistic resistance range so that you don't start to rely on feedback that the wheel might not give you in a real car or might manipulate. Do your very best to just work on your vision on the sim because I do think that is the true true value in these things. You know, Racecraft, Lead Follow, all of the community, that is the huge, huge win in the sim world right now. So uh, looking forward to meeting more people, getting in some races, building the Twitch out, and uh, yeah, <laughs> just being a bigger part of the sim culture. So looking forward to more content with this thing, and uh, till next time.